Sometimes you have to make custom props for unique moments in films like this. First thing I'd like for you to do is introduce yourself sure. and name maybe two or three projects that people would have uh, heard you're working. Hi, my name is Matt Davies. I'm a Foley artist and sound designer. I've worked on such films like the documentary Rat Film and the horror anthology VHS2. The clip I picked for this challenge was the Shaun of the Dead record throwing scene. I picked this scene because it's one of my favorites in any film, just in terms of being a scene by itself, but also because the sound design and effects and Foley for it are just so well done that coupled with the fact that it's one of my favorite scenes ever, I was just like, I have to do this scene. When I'm preparing to do a scene for Foley, this kind of automatic process starts where you start going through your library of props. And most Foley artists know their prop collection like the back of their hands because they've built up the collection for years. We don't have lists of all the stuff that we have in our libraries. It's all stored up here. It's also that it's such a quick shot. It's one of these classic Edgar Wright kind of punch-ins and rip-opens that it just needs to communicate kind of this beat, you know, not this like nuancey thing. It's just grabbing cutlery because there's a zombie in the backyard. It's an emergency. It just needs to be exciting. I think we technically have enough cutlery now. It's too much. But out of 20 different forks, there might be like two forks that are made out of the right kind of metal. Why did you later in a couple takes then just not try and get it all with one? Because you're always kind of looking for the best way for the sound to translate in the mix of the film. So in some cases, it makes a lot of sense to have the sound of the drawer opening by itself separate from the sound of the cutlery sliding, because you might have a note that's like, let's hear the aggression of the drawer being ripped open. And then let's diminish the sound of the cutlery because it's very sharp and bright. One of the takes when you first started recording the laundry basket, what do you think you were adjusting for? One thing that I figured out quite quickly was the initial sounds of kind of rattling and putting it down were quite fine. But then as you go into rummage, you're realizing that certain sounds are much more dominant than others. So we're really just left with what I would consider the essence of the prop, which is hearing a little bit of the plastic to be reminded that this is a plastic laundry basket, that they have to run upstairs or go in the laundry room to like gather that there's more kind of comedy in there, being reminded of like bachelor lifestyle. How do you really bring attention to the things that matter from a both a writing and directing standpoint that were part of the production design of that moment? kind of acts as like a giant wiffle ball and the air kind of passing through as this is whooshing is going to generate its own sound so it's very big sound kind of long it's maybe not very fast it's boring it's boring it's not a good sound so the literal uh is often um, can often not be the right way to do things, but we want to have the same idea. We just don't want to use the literal thing in this case. Uh, worth a shot always, but um, doesn't always work out, so we need to find something else. What am I trying to accomplish? I'm trying to accomplish an object that has holes in the side that needs to move quickly and that needs to create this nice swishing sound. And automatically just describing it to myself, I'm thinking, oh, tennis racket. It is literally that. It is an object with a handle that's supposed to move through the air that also has a bunch of perforations created by all the cross strings. So rubber has kind of disintegrated, so I've got red on me. Like, okay, what am I actually wanting to do? I just wanted it to be funny because they are just hurling these plates at these zombies. So we ended up going with like traditional wooden dowels because they just have a whoosh, classic whoosh sound. Maybe a little bit more cartooniness. We're going to kind of like Donatello this. We've got kind of the initial shot of him uh, seeing him lob it and then kind of the POV almost of the record chasing towards the zombies. So we, I think it'd be good if we had kind of had two different intensities of whoosh. There's kind of the wide and then the close. So we've got that. Too high. This one. Let's try that. I'm going to do these character layers for kind of zipping away. There you go.
I did two or three that were very staccato and didn't have a lot of definition to them, which are just going to kind of register as hits against the picture. So, and then that last one though, I did kind of a longer, like that. And we kind of, that kind of illustrates the sailing of kind of a large disc, kind of like frisbee object. It's a little plasticky. I'm gonna try some different objects for the plates here. Those are too fun. We're gonna do too big. The thicker stick here is generating more low frequency and the higher stick is generating more, um, more high frequency. Smashing the plates and the mugs and everything for the plates and different ceramics kind of flying through the air. That stuff was fairly easy because outside of having to watch the volume of those things a little bit, really what, all I'm doing is picking up and throwing. And then gravity and the randomness of, you know, the cosmos is affecting how they're going to blow apart. So I feel like you picked a plasticky, probably $10, $15 toaster. Were you kind of oscillating between a few or you just knew like, yep, it's this one? Sometimes you need the literal things. So I already have this toaster from this context and it's a great sounding toaster uh, because the more I use it, the looser it gets. So it's very expressive. The toaster that you see on screen is this like kind of white beige looking toaster that's cheap. It's been around the block. They've made toast maybe every day. So it's like, it's a little loose. It is hot in LA. So this moment, there's this little wooden object and it looks like it's just a static object without any machination in it, which isn't very interesting from a sound standpoint. It's such a hyperbolic scene that we're gonna exaggerate that moment with a little bit of rattle. So we've got this, I guess it's a back massager. This is the record that got thrown out the window, landed in the garden. So we're gonna pick that up. So you don't need kind of the grabs quite as much because it's part of the, the kind of general sound of it lifting. That's the more important the sound of it. This duster handle is nice because it has the same kind of, it's gonna give us the same like flat wind resistance plus there's two. So it's gonna give us a little bit more dual tonality. This will give it that hyperbolic feel that makes the film exciting. The thing for the records needs to be the coolest um, sounding whoosh, but it also needs to be a highly performative whoosher because of the way that the records are featured. We have them going super fast kind of towards camera and then there's a cut and then we see it hit. We see it fly off and seemingly kind of go into a neighbor's garden. I decided to try and zip tie a bunch of zip ties to a stick to give it some more surface area, but also kind of a unique sound that's a little bit more uh, signature to, to the moment that's happening as this is such an iconic moment in the film. We see them fly and then miss and then hit the wall. There are all these kind of cool character moments for the records. And so I wanted something that was um, more performative so I could kind of give it more expressiveness. It's almost like a conductor, you know, get very kind of fanciful with it. Part of the record smashing, I noticed that uh, you added plastic cassette to when you were breaking the stuff. What weren't you getting from the original smashing where you felt the need to add another piece of plastic? If you were to ask me what a record breaking sounds like, I would say that it sounds like a ceramic vase, but I can't use that, especially in this scene because we do actually have plates breaking. How can I do both plastic and ceramic? And so what you're looking for is a brittle plastic that has a good resonant tone to it. And cassette, um, cassette tapes, like VHS uh, cassette plastic 
and audio cassette plastic especially, it's a really brittle, hollow, thin plastic. And so all of that air in it gives it the same kind of interpretation as a ceramic breaking sound. Can you give us an idea of like how you broke this more compl- the most complicated of of all of um of all the sound effects down and especially with that with like the adjustments you even had to make two pieces of wood in order to get what you were looking for i broke it down and i was like okay so these are kind of like wood boards and you know it's it's a shed so it's not built like a tank and he you know smashes his way through it it's getting ripped apart pretty quickly and then on top of that it's then just falling to the ground and everything so it quickly kind of turns into debris i think i tried a very large wooden dowel that has a very true sustained tone i piled a bunch of stuff on a table and kind of rocked that and threw a footstep board in underneath for resonance it's essentially like that retro engineering of building all the components you know it's like I'm going to build this, this, and this, and then as they all sit together, they become the kind of sound for the door. There's a lot involved in trying to make these kind of big horror movie sounds interesting and dynamic when you're basically needing to recreate all of these big layers you might need to just have a low end layer to make things sound like weighty and interesting adding the jacket to the punching bag removed the kind of tacky sound of the outside of the punching bag so that kind of neutralized the surface but then i was kind of just left with this dull thud they know that you have to kill zombies by attacking the head so i needed something kind of hard like a skull so i ended up putting some kind of pieces of wood there for the shovel to hit the wood maybe resonates too much so i have to kind of dull it and rejigger it so it ends up being quite a complicated thing to actually do job site accident uh, bamboo is sharp we usually wear gloves for sharp things um, so don't let anybody fool you foley is fun but it, uh, it can be dangerous if you're working with sharp things. You do actually have to be careful. I've lit my hand on fire doing Foley before. I should have exercised caution and wore gloves. Um, so, so there you have it. Those displayed by their attackers. If you know someone who has been bitten, it is absolutely essential that you isolate. 